The scene starts with a lady running through a field in a panic. Soon she falls and our attention is brought to a leafless tree. After she gets up to resume running, she encounters a cabin. Something seizes her with ferocious speed as she looks at it. Then we see a drawing of that tree. A woman narrates that an unspecified man is the same age as mankind. Long before he entered their cities, he waited in dark forests and deep rivers for the lost and the weak. Cursed by the Great Father, his hatefulness is equal to his foulness. He is the Takalosh, the one who feeds on children along with those who are left alone. After this introduction, the scene changes to show our protagonist walking inside a hospital. Her name is Busey. Standing in a recruiter's office, she has her file looked at by him. Once he's done, he welcomes Busey to the night shift. She thanks him, but he tells her not to, because had it been his choice, she would not be there. The reason for this mindset of his is that the last woman who was there only stayed for two months. It makes his job difficult to constantly hire new people. Yet Busey assures him she is a committed worker. Elsewhere, another worker named Wilma tells Busey her shift starts at 9 p.m. If she arrives late or leaves early, her pay will be deducted. Busey says this place is quiet for a hospital and Wilma says there is a budget cut. Suddenly, the lights go out, scaring Busey. When she asks what this is, Wilma reveals there was a budget cut. Afterward, the duo enters the basement. They see a dark place. Somewhere Wilma advises the newcomer to never go near. Later, Busey asks Wilma if she can tell her about their boss, Ruatanam. Vulgarly, Wilma tells Busey not to be seductive around him. Then we see Ruatanam driving outside, with work being over. He nearly passes Busey on the sidewalk. The man stops for her to invite her inside his car due to the rain. She is respectful to him, saying her stop is around the corner. He wants to apologize for his earlier statement. It has been hard with the layoffs, which is why he said what he did. We see he is rubbing the seat of his car like he's getting somewhat excited. So he requests to take her home and they could have a proper introduction. However, Busey respectfully repeats that her stop is around the corner. Once she closes his car door, Ruatanam badmouths her to himself. Eventually, she arrives at her flat. She has to rest her head on the front door the moment she enters, indicating that perhaps the times have been tough for her. Shortly after, she lies on the bed, looking at a framed photo. Busey talks to it, saying soon she will have the money to bring the person in the photo to her. We see it as a photo of her sister and she hugs it while falling asleep. She dreams of them when they were little, as they run around in the field we saw in the opening scene. Then it turns to night before Busey wakes up. She gets a call on her phone, prompting her to ask if the caller is Lindy. But no one answers her. After looking at the time, Busey rushes to work. Upon arriving there, she hastily gets ready. We observe someone walking past her quickly as she is cleaning. She notices this and calls out to whoever it is. Not seeing anyone, Busey follows footprints on the floor. They lead her to a place where we see a child sitting against the wall with what looks like a squash covering his head. In a few seconds, the child vanishes. The newcomer keeps searching in the dark hallway with a flashlight and the atmosphere is tense. It doesn't take long for her to turn around to see the squash head child behind her. He or she runs away, yet Busey finds the child. She says the kid is not supposed to be there. Unfortunately, the lights turn off, allowing the kid to use this chance to disappear. Soon Busey enters a well-lit area with many beds. There, she sees a little boy. While she looks at him, a woman grabs her arm from behind. When Busey says she was following the boy, the woman says he is Thabang. According to her, he is always sneaking off. She says there are too few nurses to keep an eye on all the children. She also says most of the kids are AIDS orphans. In the meantime, we notice the huge squash on a table that the boy had on his head. The nurse introduces herself as Rosie prior to asking Busey if she heard the stories about the Takalosh. It tricks children into trusting him before being humorous. Rosie says Ruatanam is the Takalosh. After talking to her new friend, we see Busey in the area Wilma warned her never to enter. She looks at a plastic bag and a door slides, locking her in there. She moves to it to yell for help. We get to witness why this area is so dangerous. The walls start moving toward each other to crush the garbage. Perhaps it's safe to say that Busey has never found herself in such a life-threatening situation. Lucky for her, someone presses a button to free her. That person is Ruatanam, who asks her what she is doing. He somewhat scolds her by saying there are rules and he is there to make sure people follow them. Busey tries to move away from him, but he stops her. Then he starts coming onto her, soon pinning the poor lady on the floor. He presses her with his body plus and mind, by asking her how much she needs this job. As Ruatanam is in the process of trying to we get several flashing images that is hard to understand. The image that can be talked about is of a little girl who simply says the word run. Once the images finish, Busey bites the vile man to free herself. She ends up running away outside. Getting on a bus, she searches for her money to give to the driver. Since she can't find some cash, a blind man offers her some. However, Busey cannot accept such a generous gesture. She changes her mind after the man threatens to strike her with his walking stick if she does not take the money. After, he sits behind her and puts his hand on Busey, saying it will be okay. He also says his spirit senses she is in trouble. She does not say anything to him. After a short while, he says his stop is coming and asks her if she is coming with him. He shares how his daughter told him once that if a person wants to be strong, they have to wake up and do something. Busey replies that she does not know him, therefore she feels uncomfortable going with him. Before he exits the bus, 
He tells her his name is Abel. The next scene shows a man letting Busey into her apartment. He feels the need to tell her the place is too big for her to be alone in. He also says he never had to ask her for money, yet this time he is forced to. If he doesn't get the money from her rent, some people will break his legs. Afterward, they will come for her. We see Ruatanam isn't the sole person who presses himself against her, for this landlord says he knew for a long time that Busey wanted him. All she says is she will pay him prior to closing the door on him. After she does this, she leans against the wall to cry. Later, she sits in her room while the television plays disturbing news. The Takalosh is mentioned. She starts dreaming and we see the field again. A man there takes a girl. Maybe it's Busey or her sister. Soon we see her emitting her life fluid. Then Busey wakes up in a panic. She takes the framed photo of her sister to hug it and promises her she has a plan. On the next day, Busey is outside, searching near the trash for edible food. Upon seeing Abel walking the streets, she approaches him, reminding the blind man she is the one from the bus. He calls her his stubborn little daughter and laughs. Busey apologizes for yesterday, so he says the offer still stands, they can have tea, or talk, or even both. Busey picks the wise option of having both. Subsequently, Abel takes her to a place where many masks hang on a wall. Busey looks at them with interest. She finds out he made all of them. Since she is amazed at how he managed to do this as a blind man, he says spiritual healers don't need eyes to see the spiritual world. Also, the masks are supposed to be scary to scare away evil spirits. Busey says the masks are gorgeous. Moving along, Abel asks the lady what brought her to this godforsaken place. She came there for work, she says. Shortly after, Abel lets her know the masks on his wall have great power. The man asks what is troubling her and she says she left her sister alone. She does not know how she is going to get her to come to Busey. When Abel asks where she is, Busey realizes she must leave. He gets up to follow her, saying he did not mean to be offensive. She assures him he is not. She stops to look at the decorative masks on the wall. Perhaps Abel notices this and tells her to take one. She can't accept the offer, but he insists. Thus, she takes the most evil-looking mask with the curled horns. Touching it allows Abel to know which one she took. He calls it Lumakunda, the cannibal chief. It is a powerful weapon that is surrounded by many folktales. He is as wise as he is mischievous. Abel wants to give her the Lumakunda mask and his lighter. He gives the second item away because he wants to stop smoking. Then, at her flat, we see the mask hanging on an empty wall. She tries calling Lindy, only to end up leaving a message. Busey says she got her a present while looking at the mask. In the next scene, she is walking in the hospital. She arrives at a doorway. In one room, Ruatanam is putting something inside an envelope. Busey peeks into the room for a few seconds and leaves. Soon she counts her money. Not satisfied with the amount she has, she sadly asks herself what she's going to do. Following this, she sits in Ruatanam's office. He asks why should he take her back. She just asks if she still has the job or not. This prompts the vile man to come near her, showing us the bandage that now covers his nose due to Busey's bite. He starts touching her and the newcomer is backing away. However, she isn't resisting any harder than this. Before the scene ends, Ruatanam says he's keeping half of this week's wages to replace the uniform she tore. Elsewhere, Wilma comes to Busey, asking her where she's been. Once Busey says she was sick, Wilma starts laughing. This is a woman who sees right through our protagonist's lies. She says she warned Busey to stay away from their boss. Then as she is working, Busey hears talking in the hallway. A voice says they are going to have fun, but the girl being talked to says she doesn't want to. Hearing this makes Busey start walking into the hallway. After a short while, she sees the girl sitting with her back toward Busey. She also sees drawings on the wall. When she approaches the girl, the latter says not to come closer because the Takalosh forbids it. Regardless of the warning, Busey approaches the girl, saying no one is there. At this moment, a voice tells the girl to get rid of Busey. She says she doesn't like the way he plays. So Busey takes the girl by the hand and they start walking away. While they walk, something falls in the hallway. This is followed by a red ball rolling quite a distance from the same area. Soon Busey takes the girl, Gracie, back to her ward. After she puts her in bed, Gracie says the Takalosh is under it, waiting for Busey to leave. Naive to the ways of the monster, Busey assures the girl she will be okay. She gives her a stuffed animal that Gracie calls Gumo. Once Busey leaves, we observe two cuts on Gracie's shoulder. There also seems to be a monster drawn on the wall. Then, we see the red ball starting to roll by itself. It rolls under Gracie's bed and she fearfully hides under the blanket. She says she does not want to play with him anymore. Turning around, we see three additional cuts on Gracie's other shoulder. Afterward, horror strikes in the form of the girl getting lifted magically to get slammed against the bed a few times. The moment her blanket gets removed, Gracie starts running, but the door closes and an arm snatches her away. All we hear are her screams. At a different time, the police are at the hospital. Busey arrives, inquiring what happened. She sees the children's room has become restricted. Rosie is there to say her baby is gone. This causes Busey to check on Gracie in her isolated room. Entering it, she finds the red ball on the bed. Gracie is beside it, covered in her blanket. The girl says he is back, which makes Busey apologize for giving her false assurance. She wants to restore the damage that was done by telling Gracie to come with her. Thus, the duo walks along the hospital until Busey enters Ruatanam's office. After searching through his drawers, she locates the envelope and takes money out of it. 
Subsequently, they sneak out of the hospital prior to riding a bus. As they do, Busey learns that Gracie's parents were not good to her. Eventually, they get off the bus and enter Busey's apartment. Busey lights two lanterns inside. While Gracie plays with the red ball she took with her, Busey sits in a chair with her head in her hands. Then she answers her ringing phone. In the meantime, Gracie speaks to someone we don't see. She says she does not want to play now. Busey tells the person she is talking to that she cannot handle the work anymore. She is talking to Rosie, who is telling Busey it has gone crazy there. As they converse, Gracie is playing catch with the person we still don't see. Busey informs her friend she took Ruotanum's money because he is a thief, mentioning she also needs to save her sister. Soon our focus shifts to Gracie, who whispers that she can't see someone and that he should show himself. She enters the bedroom, where she hears ominous sounds coming from somewhere. The sounds bring her to look at the mask on the wall Abel gave to Busey. She screams and we see Gracie suffering on the floor. In a matter of seconds, she quickly gets dragged across the floor, passing Busey in the process. With this inexplicable occurrence, the doors on the cabinet start opening and closing. Furthermore, the dishes fly out to show the house is haunted to a serious degree. Once the flame in the lantern goes out, it becomes completely dark. Busey lights her lighter, which allows her to find a scared Gracie. The girl tells Busey that the Takaloche followed them from the hospital. She also says he is in the bedroom. Realizing that Gracie is talking about the mask, Busey says it's Lumicunda, whose job is to scare away evil spirits. The mask looks frightening for a purpose, according to Busey. It's to scare evil away. Now Gracie smiles at the mask, and when the duo leaves the room, its eyes light up. While Busey sleeps, she dreams of a man dressed in a strange attire. He looks like a witch doctor. A girl lies near him, bleeding. Outside of the dream, the door to Busey's room opens. Something seems to enter under her blanket, causing her to wake up. Then a knock comes at the door and the mask of Lumicunda falls from the wall and shatters on the floor. Right after Busey opens the front door, Ruatanum knocks her down with a crowbar. He holds the weapon to her head, asking the lady what he said to her the first time they met. He answers his question by saying she was trouble. His next question is regarding the location of his money. Once he steps away from Busey, she starts crawling away. But he comes to her to put the crowbar around her neck. However, she shatters a lit lantern on the floor to make the light disappear. In the utter darkness, Ruatanum lights a lighter. He relights the broken lantern. Yet doing this does not help him because Busey is behind the wicked man and she stabs him several times. As a result, he falls and his life fluid decorates the floor beneath him. Afterward, she finds a scared Gracie hiding in a corner. When they exit the building, an injured Ruotanum follows them. Thankfully, a vehicle rams into him. It stops for a brief moment, only to continue driving. People gather to stare at the lifeless man. Then Busey is back in her flat, packing her belonging. Her phone rings and she answers it, thinking it's Lindy but it's not. The woman she is talking to says Busey's sister has lost her life. The woman cries along with Busey. She throws her phone across the room in anger. The next scene shows a vehicle driving along a road. Inside is Busey, with her young rescued friend, Gracie. The leafless tree is there, and the woman who was on the phone with Busey comes out of her home to greet her. We learn the woman is Busey's mother, who was not expecting to see her daughter. At night, they sit at a table, where the mom says she is happy Busey came for the funeral. She also says Busey's father is with his daughter. Furthermore, she thinks all of this is a disgrace. But for whom is it a disgrace? asks Busey. She adds that their mom was supposed to protect them. So Busey questions where she was. According to her, their mother allowed certain unspecified people to do whatever they wanted with her daughters. Once the mom says she did not, her daughter gets angry, telling her mom she was responsible for Lindy's demise. Before leaving in anger, Busey tells the woman she isn't her mom. She comes to the leafless tree. Soon, we see Lindy from it. This dismal sight brings our heroine to her knees. Gracie comes near Busey to say she does not want to stay there anymore. She feels like deceased people are talking to her. On the next day, the funeral for Busey's sister is briefly shown. Busey comes to Lindy's grave to place flowers on it. Then a man comes to her, saying they did not know she was coming. His presence seems to make Busey walk away in disappointment. He doesn't mind her behavior. He places a flower on the grave and walks away. Later, Gracie prays prior to her bedtime. While Busey readies their blanket, something takes form under it. Just as Busey notices it, the form vanishes. When she lies in bed with Gracie, the latter asks her where the monster is. Busey says he is at his place. Gracie feels the desire to look out the window during the time Busey is asleep. A voice calls out to Busey, but Gracie is the one who goes outside. Out there, she searches for her toy, Gumo. We see someone standing in the nightly mist, whispering for Busey. Gracie walks in that direction and finds Gumo on the ground. She follows this person into the area we saw at the start of the film. Suddenly, Busey wakes up, calling out to Lindy. She notices Gracie is not in bed with her. Following this, Busey walks outside with a lantern in search of her friend. Upon finding her, the girl tells Busey that Lindy is looking for her. So the duo walks in the direction Gracie was walking in. Eventually, they encounter Hut that Busey is scared to enter. However, Gracie says her sister is in there. After convincing Busey to enter the hut, the duo sees three children in there. More importantly, Busey sees her sister and asks if it's truly her. Lindy is pleased her sister finally came. She cries at their reunion having to be like this. Once Busey says she let her down, Lindy says she did not. 
It is time for them to live their lives, she adds. Soon she says the Takaloshe is coming and urges Busey to run. Listening to her, Busey runs out of the hut with Gracie. They run in fear as the monster chases them until Gracie runs back into the house, where she hides under a table. Then, Busey joins her before pouring flammable liquid on the floor. Suddenly, the door opens in addition to the lantern going out. A voice calls out to Busey while the duo hides under the table in fear. Unexpectedly, a man appears near Busey to do nothing but laugh, taking his place. The monster is now there to stare at Busey. He is the Takaloshe, letting us see him for the first time. Busey says it's over as she lights the flammable liquid with her lighter. The fire it creates burns the Takaloshe, at last bringing this being to the floor. The final moment shows Busey standing outside and watching the house burn. Yet Gracie is not beside her. We can only hope she survived. 